Hello, I'm Courtney Fingar, Editor-in-Chief of FDI Magazine. We are currently sending to press the April-May issue of the magazine, and the cover story will be looking at China's super ambitious New Silk Road initiative. My colleague, FDI Deputy Editor Jacopo Dettoni, has been researching this story, is writing the cover story, and recently returned from doing a little bit of the Silk Road journey yourself. First of all, tell me, what impact do you think this might have on foreign direct investment? Actually, the vision of a modern Silk Road creates a huge opportunity for uh, infrastructure development and definitely for uh, foreign investment. Uh, it's fair to, to think that uh, Chinese companies will get the lion's share of it because they get uh, preferential access to these uh, markets uh, along the, the modern Silk Road because of the, 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 the bilateral agreements signed by the Chinese governments and the governments along the way. But still there will be plenty of room also for foreign investors other than Chinese investors. Uh, there are already many companies active in uh, projects related to uh, the modern Silk Road in uh, Kazakhstan, for example, Dubai-based the port operator DP World is operating a couple of uh, uh, intermodal terminals along uh, one of these key corridors between China and uh, the Middle East and Europe. Or there is, uh, we interviewed also a Russian-German uh, logistics operator which is running uh, um, a railway service between uh, China and uh, Germany. So the, the, we can say that this vision is so ambitious and so massive, it's such an ambitious undertaking that there will be plenty of opportunities for uh, Chinese companies as well as uh, uh, companies coming from many other parts of the world. You're right, it is extremely ambitious and because of that there's a lot of hype and a lot of excitement surrounding the project. Is it possible that all of the hype is overblown? Can it actually be delivered on the scale that's being talked about? True. It's, uh, right now the expectations are sky high and I was also speaking to an analyst in Beijing and he told me that even the Chinese government was not expecting uh, this initiative to have uh, such a big success. Uh, some 30 countries around the, the world signed uh, agreements with the Chinese government uh, to develop projects on uh, within the context of a uh, modern Silk Road and another 70 or so they, they already showed interest for it. So um, the expectations are sky high but still there are huge barriers to be overcome, physical, geographical, also soft barriers like uh, custom clearance procedures and uh, they won't be easily overcome uh, unless uh, there will be a big push or investment push by, by governments along the way, by the Chinese governments, private companies, banks, multilateral banks and so it's, uh, the expectations are there but uh, it will take time to make it happen to let trade flow between uh, uh, China and the Middle East and Europe. As part of your reporting, you were in western China in some of the essential locations uh, where the Silk Road begins. Tell me about your impressions and also tell me where you visited and what that was like. Right, we went to um, a couple of places uh, there in West China. Chongqing, which in actually Chongqing is uh, in central China and it's the kilometer zero of this railway that connects, uh, connects China with uh, Duisburg in Germany. And then we went to Lanchu, which is along uh, the Gansu Corridor, a key tra transit corridor between East and West China. And then eventually Runchi in Xinjiang, which is another key uh, place uh, along the Silk Road uh, initiative. And uh, it's really impressive to see the pace of development uh, these uh, provinces have experienced in the last few years. These were isolated, less developed provinces compared to, to uh, East China. And now everywhere you go, you see uh, brand new infrastructure, brand new airports, brand new uh, high-speed uh, high railways, um, brand new free trade zones. And uh, the, the, the feeling that you get when you, when you visit these places is that they are still working far from uh, full uh, potential, full capacity. Uh, Maybe because they've just been uh, uh, completed in a way. For example, in Urumqi there is this new uh, international airport, and the merch are, merchants are still in the in the process of setting up shops in the duty-free area. Uh, but also because uh, trade potential has yet to be uh, achieved because there are uh, connection links missing in Central Asia and different parts of uh, uh, this vast Eurasian region, the uh, Eurasian region that connects China and uh, Europe and the Middle East. Well, I guess these locations will be joined up soon enough. In any case, only time will tell. We'll be following that. 
readers can read Jacopo's story about the Silk Road uh, by the middle of April on FDIintelligence.com as well as the print edition of the magazine. Thanks for tuning in.